I'm Jay Bhattacharya. I'm, uh, I'm the, uh, the, uh, the uh, guest editor for the issue of the, the American Journal of Managed Care that you see in front of you. Uh, and, I, and today we want to highlight a very, very important issue. Today we're going to highlight a very, very important issue of, on, on the uh, 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 hepatitis C, the new opportunities in hepatitis C, and in particular with the, with the development of these, these new drugs that, that can actually cure the disease, it uh, poses enormous challenges for the, the health economics, as I'm, as I'm sure you're well, well aware. So I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm, not going to try, I'm going to try very hard not to bore you, but I need to give you just a very, very brief background on, on uh, the, 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 the scope of the problem of hepatitis C. and then. Uh, so, and then I'm going to introduce the panel, and they're going to do the, all the hard work. Um, okay, so hepatitis C infects between 2.7 2 and 4.5 million people in the United States, uh, but it infects 170 million people worldwide. It's an enormously common disease, and uh, worldwide it kills about 500,000 people a year. Uh, these numbers, especially the, the infection numbers, are a little bit uh, hard, to, hard to pin down because uh, in the early stages of the disease, it's, it's, it tends to be asymptomatic. So a lot of people might have it that, that, that don't know they have it. Uh, the transmission of the HCV is, is the most common in the United States anyways, is by sharing of IV drug uh, uh, needles for drug, IV drug abuse. Um, inadequate sterilization for medical equipment is a much more common cause worldwide. Uh, transfusion of unscreened blood products, again, in the U.S., not such a huge problem, um, but worldwide an enormous problem. And this is rare but very sad when it happens, the mother-to-child transmission during childbirth. Okay, uh, what's the clinical course? As I mentioned, when you, when, the first, when you first get the disease, you often don't know that you have it. It, it presents with flu-like symptoms in the acute infection. Um, 70% of those who get the, the acute infection then go on to develop chronic hepatitis C, and then 20 to 30 years later, they get a liver failure, end-stage liver failure. It's a very, very common reason why people need liver transplants in the U.S. Before the development of these new drugs, it was, it, the hepatitis C was seen as a chronic disease that led inexorably toward this, toward this end, this, this liver failure end. But between 2013 and 2015, there have been some fantastic new drugs that, that can treat a, the hepatitis C very effectively, reducing, in many cases, reducing viral load to zero, in effect, a cure of the, for the disease. Um, and, and, and now, each of these drugs have particular properties. I'm not going to go into the properties of the drugs. They can treat different genetic Pheno, uh, gen, uh, genotypes of the disease. So there's different forms of hepatitis C. Some drugs are better, uh, some, some genotypes than others. On net, we, there, people think that we can cure about 90 percent of hepatitis C disease. The problem is that the, the drugs are ex enormously expensive, and as a result, there's, uh, there's been a lot of reluctance on the part of insurers to cover them, and also there's been lots of, uh, uh, of of uh, uh, mechanisms to try to, to, to have patients partly pay for these drugs. Um, so that's the focus of this American Journal of Managed Care special issue that you see in front of you. Uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, there are sort of a few key findings I want to highlight, uh, but the, 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 articles, the articles in the paper, especially, the, the, uh, are filled with really, really interesting findings, and I, I recommend that you, uh, you get a chance to take a look carefully through them. Uh, first, the cure rates found that, that, were, that were found in the clinical trials actually do show up in clinical practice. Uh, and in places where they don't show up, so for instance, co-infected HIV and HCV patients, um, the problem is uh, better, we need better programs to guarantee adherence to therapy. Uh, this, this theme of, of lack of adherence to therapy throws up, shows up throughout this, uh, this, the, the treatment for HCV. Uh, and in particular, insurance coverage, one, one major finding that from, from, a, from a paper that you see in front of you is, is that the insurance coverage and low out-of-pocket um, costs greatly increase adherence to therapy. And conversely, when there's high out-of-pocket costs, patients don't follow through with the treatment. Or if they don't have insurance coverage, they don't start the treatment at all. And so they, 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 the, uh, the potential to cure an HCV patient is lost when this, when this happens. Um, Another key finding that, uh, from, a, from, a, from an article in the, paper, in, the journal, in the journal is that insured patients face up to $11,000 in out-of-pocket costs. It, even, poor, even poor patients who have, are on, on uh, uh, systems like Medicare can face, uh, Medicaid can face very, very substantial costs uh, in, for the course of treatment. So in the real world, what's happening is that patients see the cost and decide not to take treatment. 
Now, if we do manage to cure HCV patients, this can have enormous social benefits. And the key idea to remember is that there's lots of people who, uh, who, uh, who would get HCV if, if it wouldn't, wouldn't get HCV if only we could cure the people who have them. HCV is an infectious disease, so curing the disease in one population greatly reduces the transmission probabilities. It's a disease we could get rid of, and there's not that, that many of them. Uh, applying the HCV cure universally would produce enormous social benefits, as, as, as again, as documented by some of the, 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 uh, the articles in this, in this, in this journal. And um, as, as some of the, the, uh, the panels will show, you can actually reduce health expenditures in the long run. It's very expensive at first, but it's, it could reduce expenses, expenses in the long run. So it's, uh, the economics of it are very, very interesting. It's one of these situations where you have an enormous opportunity to, to generate large social benefits but there's a big upfront cost, and the key issue is how, to, how do you finance it? Uh, so let me introduce that. Let me just introduce the panel. Uh, the, uh, first, we have uh, Professor Darius Lakdawalla, who is the Quintiles Professor of uh, Pharmaceutical Development at the University of Southern California. He's an e economist, and he's going to be talking about the, uh, uh, the, the health economics of HCV. We have uh, Dr. Bapu Jena, who is an Associate Professor of Medicine and uh, the uh, Ruth Newhouse Chair at Harvard University. Uh, both of those have, have articles, sort of peer-reviewed articles in the, uh, in the journal. Um, and uh, uh, Dr. Jenna is, uh, is going to talk to you about the public health issues surrounding HCV and the new cure. And then finally, we have uh, Ryan Clary, who's the Executive Director of the National Virus Hepatitis Roundtable, and he will, he will uh, tell you about, the, about, the, uh, uh, about sort of the opportunities of, that, that, that come with, uh, with, with treating HCV and curing it in as large or wide a population as we possibly can. Thanks. I think he's trying to lose his job is what he's trying to do.